Hi friends, thank you so much for being here today. I am going to be talking about my April favorites and we're gonna do it full face, get ready with me style since a lot of these things, not maybe everything, but a lot of these things will like make up a full face. I have some incredible products that are favorites. I also have a handful of fails that I think I'll share at the end. So yeah, we're gonna jump right in. I have already moisturized and put on my eye cream and the next thing we're gonna do is actually my um, SPF and it's a favorite as well and I kind of treat this as a primer. It's from Super Goop, Super Goop and it's called the Glow Screen SPF 40 and they say this has clean chemical sunscreen actives. Lightweight pearlescent formula hydrates the skin while acting as a luminous makeup gripping primer. So I really like this stuff. I like that I'm getting kind of that dual purpose. Um, there are so many products before you put your makeup on that it seems like you're you know put on this layer, put on that layer and here it's kind of like the combination of some glowy primer and your sunscreen step. And I have had really good luck with various super goop sunscreens over time, but this one I really think has a beautiful finish on the skin. I don't think I really showed as I squeezed it out, but it's just a little bit beigey in color, um, but it definitely has that glow, and I think it's just absolutely lovely. And it also gives a little extra moisture to my skin, which I feel like I can use. And skin steps, by the way, like my coverage products, putting on concealer, putting on foundation or a BB cream type step. I am so into that these days. Like sometimes we go in phases, I've talked about this before about, you know, the part of makeup that you really, really enjoy the most. And I just love those beginning steps where you kind of lay the foundation for everything else. And this next product, guys, this is so good. This is actually, if you look up on Ulta's website under the BB creams and CC creams, I'm kind of fired up on this topic today. If you go there and you see what is actually top rated, you will find something that has fabulous reviews and ratings, but you never hear anybody actually talking about it here on YouTube. This is called the Hey Honey Trick and Treat CC2 Active Moisturizing Cream. I have this in the light to medium tone, and this is so beautiful. Um, this is definitely one of those things. I've been using it on and off for months now, and I'm considering it in my grouping of products for like the best um, skin like foundations. It's tough because I've been talking about that video like forever, but more things like just kind of keep bouncing in that I'm like, oh, I need to try and consider that for, you know, my favorites and figure out what's the best. So stand by, it's coming, but this stuff is so awesome. It says it's an active moisturizing cream with honey and Propolis. This is beautiful on the skin. This is most of a pump, maybe not quite a full pump. And I'm just gonna kind of dab it around here. It might look like it's a hair dark on my skin, but it really, given the texture and the not totally full coverage nature of this product, it works just fine. So I'm gonna use my Real Techniques RT Go brush. It's a nice wide brush and it just makes really quick work of the blending. But yeah, I'm just loving face steps. I get a ton of satisfaction out of putting on, you know, those wonderful full coverage foundations. I will always love that. But these days, it's kind of been really, really fun for me to try to nail down those certain products that are like, as light as I can get by with, but still do something for my skin. Now this definitely has some coverage. I would say it's getting close to IT Cosmetics um, CC cream kind of coverage. The glow is so pretty, but not like in your face or kind of like shimmery or artificial. There's some great added moisture in there. Um, the finish is just flawless. I mean, just the radiance factor is so, so nice. Now, I wouldn't say that's full coverage, but my word, is that a satisfying, really beautiful look across the skin. It's evening out a lot. It's not covering everything that you would like use a separate concealer for anyway, but just the surface of the skin looks so nice and natural, but yet a definite step up from where we started. So I just, I'm loving this stuff. I didn't purposely pull in a concealer 
concealer favorite, um, but I have this handy. This is my Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Brightener, so let's just use that, shall we? I've got some circles. I got some darkness, I feel. Um, we have had some rough nights with little baby Rhett. I don't know if he's either going through some kind of sleep regression. I'm pretty darn sure he's teething, so that's probably part of it, but we've just had some rough waking up nights. So I dab that everywhere I want to brighten, and I feel like I can always use a generous amount. I wouldn't say I use tons, but I apply that pretty liberally because I just think the texture is such that it doesn't cause trouble for me. It gives me that coverage and brightness kind of all in one. It could be a favorite. It has been a favorite. I guess I just haven't used it a ton just here real recently. The reason why it was out, I think I was using it to pick up the slack for a concealer that was not doing enough the other day when I was getting ready. And the hydration level on this Hey Honey, by the way, like it definitely does add moisture to your skin, but I don't feel sticky. It's like if you just put on a foundation that had a little extra moisture to it, that's sort of the feel. I don't feel like really, really goopy. I'm just gonna do a light bit of setting powder. This has been a long time favorite. Didn't specifically pull it into my favorites basket, but my Rimmel Stay Matte in the Sandstorm shade with the e.l.f. Small Tapered Brush. You know the drill. We're just gonna hit that under eye area real quick and the T-zone for staying power's sake. Of course, I love the Stay Matte because you're able to get the mattified effect, but you're never gonna like over apply with powder. It's just when you stick your brush in there, you don't pick up too much. Then this is a huge rediscovered favorite. Love this, actually kind of rediscovered favorites on the blush and the bronzer here, but my Laura Geller Bronze and Brighten. This um, is available these days, I believe in two shades. And I'm talking about the medium, I don't know if they call it regular or medium, but it's like the deeper of the two. But I've had this on hand for a while. I have actually finished an entire bronze and brighten over my entire makeup using career. Um, it was a smaller one, but it took a long, long time because these are baked, domed up products. And I was just wanting to use something different for bronzer not that long ago. And I thought, hey, let's bust out the Laura Geller again. I'd kind of forgotten about it. And it's so, so good. It's like a swirl of uh, brown and bronze and beige and pink. The tone is so perfect on the skin. It's like I've got my hair clipped back, but I still need to yank it back with my hand. I don't know why. But just a super good tone. I love contouring with this. And it, it's one of those products that if you buy it, you will have it for the long haul because they are baked, domed up products, but they're also very, very pigmented. So every time you dip in and use some, you know, I'm going like that and that's it. I'm getting a real nice contour going on here. And then I have another little trick I wanna show you with this product. Hold on, take it down the neck. Okay, there is something about this bronzer that is so pretty. If you even just start to take it right on the top of the cheek, like treat it like a blush application. It's so pretty. You see that? You see how that makes an actual pretty blush? Like bronzy, natural, blush in a hurry kind of look. I love that. Just go straight across the nose, look very naturally sun-kissed. Anyway, you can't go wrong with that product. That is a classic. And then I don't know if you saw my video recently where I turned out a bunch of blush dupes, also a couple highlighter dupes and various things, face product dupes. Something that was a dupe of one of the shades in the Beauty Bakery Cotton Candy Champagne Palette is this little gem right here. And this is Saucy Mauve from Physician's Formula. So beautiful, actually a pretty unique kind of shade, I think, because it sort of blurs the lines of berry and neutral and dusty rose and it just kind of pulls all those worlds together and it looks so pretty on the skin with the perfect sheen and shimmer and the beauty bakery butt blushes really go there they're very pigmented they do definitely have that shimmer as though they've been mixed with highlighter or something and that's what I love about this product is it it gets on that level so I love it so much I loved it quite some time ago and thank 
thinking well over a year ago was when I got into this shade and I sort of rediscovered it more recently. So Saucy Mom, get you some. Oh my gosh, my bronzer, my blush, and my highlight are all rediscovered products. This is the new highlight I'm really getting into now. No, it's not new. It's rediscovered, but it feels new to me. It's the RMS Beauty Living Luminizer. This is like the sneakiest of all sneaky highlights. It looks like kind of a glowy pearl thing going on here. And if I swatch it on my hand, see how like you might even expect to see more of a big streak of metallic there. But instead, what you get is something that looks just kind of dewy on the skin. Let me show you. You're going to have to see it applied to the cheek for you to understand this. Okay, so give yourself a little smile and then dab it right over this full part. That's kind of what I go for. And you get this glow on the surface of the skin that has absolutely like no shimmer showing up, but it's just that beautiful light catching ability right there. Isn't that lovely? Like it's so sneaky and you're applying so little product to get this effect. Like I absolutely love that. It really is like you just applied dew to the skin, okay? That's what it is. Um, but you're applying so little that you're not having a real um, interference with other products on the skin, and you're also not feeling like super duper tacky. And I'm just gonna dab this, I mean, it's just this easy. You're finger painting your face a little bit. And I don't know guys, I'm absolutely loving that. I think that is such a gorgeous, gorgeous highlighter. Um, this might be the highlight for people who don't think they like highlighter. <laughs> That's what that is. I'm going to apply a little setting spray. I've got my e.l.f. hydrating coconut mist here, so let's just toss off the cap and go for it. <laughs> what just happened there? Oh, that stuff smells so dang good. Next, I'm gonna do my brows. I don't have a specific brow favorite. What should I use? Let's pull out this Anastasia Brow Wiz that I randomly found in my collection. Um, didn't even really know I had it. I'm trying to go a little faster with the brows instead of getting into a whole separate monologue about something unrelated because Bub's got a deposition to leave for early this morning and we don't know how long little man's gonna stay asleep right now. So really trying to fit this video in, squeeze it in. Okay, brushing him through. This is actually a really subtle shade in my brows, but I like it. And then I will just use some Almay Brow Styler to go over and give myself that little bit of added hold. And then we'll do a little bit of eyeshadow primer here. This is the good old Milani. Again, always a favorite. Didn't really pull it into my basket. I just can't get over the way that Living Luminizer looks because you just, you just don't see shimmer. You don't see shimmer tracks. I mean, I love all kinds of highlighters. I love many highlighters that would do that, but this is just a very special kind of unique highlighter. Also, I wanted to mention, I mean, this hasn't been in my collection for a real long time, but I'm kind of loving this purchase that I made. I sort of talked about it regretfully in my Amazon video because I was like, you know, I'd like to get the Wet n Wild Ultimate Brow Highlight because I lost it and I like that in my lower inner rim. But instead, I was buying on Amazon and this Anastasia Highlighting Duo Pencil, the Matte Camille and the Sand Shimmer, that's what I ended up with. But I'm kind of loving this product actually because I'm using it on both ends and, you know, both purposes are working well. So what I find I'm doing before I even start my eyeshadow is I go ahead and I take that light matte end, put that in the lower inner rim, because you know why not start with the brightness? Okay, totally bright. Then I take a little bit of it and like on the high point of the arch area there, I find myself going over that and cleaning it up just a little bit. Then I take the glowy side and I add a little more up there. And this is, yeah, before the eyeshadow even starts. And it's like I'm taking care of my highlight. There may or may not be a highlighter shadow that I use, but boom, I'm a little bit brightened and lifted there. Then this shade is so gorgeous. Yes, I'm gonna go ahead and do that inner corner. It's like the perfect tone and texture to just encircle that tear duct, provide a little brightness, and you're done. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, it's perfect around the cupid's bow too. 
brightening up that area. It's just a little multi-purpose face pencil, okay? Um, so I'm liking it and I'm glad I got that double-ended thing. Next up for eyeshadow, I do have two favorite palettes that I pulled out. One of them, um, A Rediscovered Love. This is my Too Faced Natural Matte. I really have been coming back to this a lot. It's so basic, but I kind of love the little horizontal um, categorization here because you've got like your basic, most classic, um, naturally contoured looking eye right here. One option that gives you a little more plum and then your warm option down here at the bottom. Now you can totally scramble them up and mix and match however you want, but the textures are so nice on these shades, guys. I talk often about how Too Faced mattes are really, really strong. Um, so it only takes a little bit as you're using them, and I find the blending is so nice. And I'm just, I'm a fan of an all matte eye. There's something so flawless about the way that comes off. And when you're kind of sticking with all the same texture, the blending is really, really easy. Sorry, I've got like hairs over here on my brow just popping out. Guess I didn't put on enough gel. So anyway, you've heard me talk about it before. It was one of my top spring palette picks actually, but my other thing is really pretty new to my collection. It's been just the past couple weeks I've been playing with this and I love it. Here's what it's doing. I talked about, you know, my favorite step in makeup these days being the skin, you know, doing BB creams, doing CC creams, trying to find the perfect products for base steps on the face. That's really like getting me going these days. Also lash primer, those two things. I'm loving it. But you know what's starting to make a play for really getting me excited about eye makeup again? Sigma Corda Rosa. This palette is absolutely stunning with beautiful, consistent, lovely textures. Um, it really does make me think modern renaissance when I look at it because we've got rich berries. We've also got some warm shades in there, but there's a little more glitz going on here actually. In terms of the textures, you've got like some really um, shimmery, borderline sparkly shades that actually apply really super duper well. Um, some smooth shimmers, just general metallics in there, but a lot of gorgeous mattes too. So you could do that great all matte look. Um, I've just been having so much fun with it. It's a really awesome palette. The shades are right up my alley and just the different combinations. It's like color that I'm really comfortable with. Also the included brush, you're getting an E38 on one end and an E54 medium sweeper on the other. It looks kind of like a flat brush, but there's a little more fluff toward the end. Um, it is tapered to an extent, but not quite as flat as my normal flat brush, I guess is what I'm trying to say, but it's still really, really good. I mean, anytime Sigma, the brand known for brushes, is including a brush in a palette, you're really getting something there. So I thought I would just throw together a little look with this palette today. And I'm gonna take this lovely matte medium pink and I'm gonna pop that in my crease. There are so many like crease options, kind of set the stage options in this palette. Um, the pink, there's, you know, different peachy and warmer brown and kind of terracotta options here. But I'm gonna take this in a little bit of a pinky direction because of um, the lip I'm planning to pair with it today. Definitely one tap in, tap off the excess. The quality is just, phenomenal. Do you guys remember when I did that video where I was like really highlighting different Sigma makeup products because those are, the, the makeup from Sigma is that brand's hidden gem. It's known for the brushes, but the makeup products are really, really good. They have put out some great palettes. Um, that Dream palette, that one was really nice. But this one is just, for whatever reason, it's kind of lighting my fire for wanting to do fun eye looks again. Now I'm gonna go to this shade called Apricot. Hot. Yes, I call it apricot. Um, kind of a yellowish peach. And I'm going to let that come around the border of the pink. It's going to give everything a bit more of a peachy look. But these mattes, you know, there's a lot of matte in here. Really, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine mattes in this palette. And Corda Rosa here, that's another great starting point kind of shade, um, kind of the signature color of the palette. You know, it's Dusty Rose. It's a great little Dusty Rose crease color. Okay, look at how pretty those shades are combining right there. I mean, these are the sunset colors that I'm starting to see all the time in the evenings, you know? Absolutely beautiful, guys. And then I'm gonna take this shade called Shakespeare here, this berry. This is so nice. I had to show you what this looks like in case you haven't really seen this one yet. That richness that just immediately comes to your look when you put that on. And this is just my own E60 flat brush. Just kind of flipping it a little bit, getting some of that color to my crease. But you want to talk about a perfect merging of shades right there. They're just fun shadows to layer up. That's what's fun about this. That's what I like about it. Then, you know, you can use this little brush that came with it. It's a great blender. And maybe we take a little bit of this Summer Song shade, this terracotta, and just where those shades are coming together, apply a little heat. That's what that shade is. That's the heat. Oh, oh my. I'm loving it. If I could put a little edit on my um, favorite spring palettes video, this would be in there. I hadn't tried it yet. This is the thing coming into my favorites like the most late in the game, but I am incredibly enthusiastic for this. Um, and maybe we do a little bit of gold on the lid. We've got all this berry. We've got a little bit of fiery warmth. Maybe we take Sun Sprite right here this gold. Now watch that shade being applied well. It's got some sparkle, but it's being applied effectively with a brush. That one and Belle of the Ball over here, these are the ones that have a little sparkle. I may still go in and, you know, go over it with my finger, but it's nice to see that it can be applied with a flat brush. It's just nice to know you can control that shade. It's not getting all over my face as I put it on. Now I'm going back to Shakespeare. I just need a little bit more to work over that border. Don't want to lose my nice berry intensity out there. And then this shade here, Veranda, this matte cream. So great. Really like a full coverage light matte shade. And typically I'd probably like ease my way in with the lightest shimmery shade, but instead I'm keeping the shimmer to the gold and I went matte um, in my most inner part. The shimmer you do see is taken care of by that ABH stick. Then this little guy, my little Profusion um, small pointed ES6. Let's take a little bit of this brown bare root. Love this color. This is also really nice if you want to get contrast in your look, but you don't feel like taking it in a berry direction. It's lovely to see that they've included a nice rich matte dark brown. So I get a little bit of that and go underneath. And then I'll take a little medallion. That's this warm medium brown right here. And I'll also blend that right over everything on the lower lash line. Okay, I'm, I'm loving that. I'm so enjoying that look. Next up, I'm just gonna curl these lashes. Yeah, we're just gonna jump into that step. I'm not gonna waste time with liner today. And I didn't pick a lash primer favorite because I'm just not there yet. Because guess what I figured out? I'm applying too much lash primer and it's changed my the whole way I'm seeing everything I've been testing now. Because somebody mentioned in a recent video, they're like, you know, you only need a little bit of that lash primer. I started to think, am I like trying to cake up my lashes way too much with a primer? And sure enough, I start applying less and I don't know, everything just seemed to be working a little bit more smoothly for me. I'm using Milani today. I felt like I was actually getting a more defined, pretty effect to, to my lashes with what I was putting on top of my primer. So I've got quite a few lash primers I'm testing right now. Um, different combinations of primers and mascaras and whatnot, so I don't have a favorite to name right at this time. I mean, I do love this one if you just are needing something right now. This Milani, the violet one, is a really great option. But I've just been putting on less just to where I can see everything is just coated. And then no more. 
So I'm just trying to get to every lash and then stop yourself. Then I let that dry. For now, I wanna talk about lips though. A couple favorites of the month, one of them being my Clinique Black Honey. This is not um, what it normally looks like. Like this came in a little holiday duo, I think, but it's a product called Almost Lipstick and it's kind of like a lip balmy feeling thing. I can just throw it on here for you if you wanna see it. Um, it's a very earthy color. It's got some berry, but it's also got like some neutral. Look at me trying to describe Black Honey like nobody knows about it. It's a classic. It's been around forever. It's kind of an iconic color and product from Clinique, but what's not to love about that, right? It's got a little less pink in it, I would say, compared to my Nivea Blackberry, if you need a frame of reference there, but I love that. Now I'm gonna have to take it off because I got another thing to show you. Rimmel, this Provocalypse 6 16 hour kiss proof lip color. This is legit. Um, if I could edit my Rimmel top five, bottom five, and throw this into my top five, absolutely. What we have here is a long wear layer that you're gonna put on, it's gonna dry down, and then this really great top layer that adds some shine, but it's like a gorgeous texture as well. It feels great. And um, this particular shade I love so much, it's called um, Wish Upon a Berry. Yes, go figure, I love a berry. But it's kind of a soft, like, really just a soft pink. And it really gives you some CoverGirl Outlast vibes if you're used to that. But I think it might last even better. Like the other day I was wearing this, it took me from seven o'clock in the morning, seven o'clock at night. I only did one reapplication of that step once, one time. And I still had full color going on on my lips. Now here's another thing though. See how this color is not like a drastic far cry from my natural lit color. Like I'm not going with the most dramatic, boldest, brightest red. I'm going with something that's a little closer to my lip color. And then if you do have any wear down or any like flake away, which sometimes these products, if you do completely neglect it all day, you will start to have some of it flaking away. Even if you just apply the top coat one more time throughout the rest of the duration of your day, like you will revitalize the product and you will have that until, like it was on my lips until I was in the shower, removing all my makeup and then scrubbing away at my lip. And also if you get to the point where this is the only thing on your lips, the creamy part is worn off, it's not not that uncomfortable. We got different things cooking on the face at different times. We got the lash primer drying, now we got the lip drying. We're gonna go back to the lashes. Stay with me here, people. What are we gonna try on top? We're gonna do a little bad gal bang from Benefit on top of this see how that works for us. But going lighter with the primer, I can't stress it enough. This is a nice combo. That's a nice combo, y'all. Look at that length. Literally go as light with your lash primer as you possibly can because I have taken that tip and I think it was Susan. Susan, thank you for that. I've taken that tip and used it with like a handful of eye primers that I have and it benefited each and every one of them. Like it's an across the board. And have I been calling it eye primer for the past five minutes? I mean lash primer. It is an across the board lash primer tip that works. And look at that, oh, love. Great length, great separation. Now, as usual, I didn't curl the left side as long. It's drooping on me a little bit. Sorry, left side. But this um, Bad Gal Bang, this wears really well. It's a very like, not a waterproof mascara, but like it really seems to wear like iron and it doesn't love to come off the easiest. And then bottom lashes, I'm just gonna put on my Thrive, Thrive Liquid Lash Extensions. This is a tubing mascara. If you haven't like been here for my videos in recent months, I like this mascara on the bottom because it's incapable of smudging. Literally as it removes from the lashes, it comes off like in little tubes. It just kind of like balls up and leaves the lashes instead of leaving like a streak on the skin or anything. Okay, now the rimmel is dry and we go to this other end. I really like this top coat. It feels like a perfectly textured gloss and now there's no transfer, see? That color is on there and that's another real benefit to this product is you can be kissing babies, you can be doing all your things and nothing is transferring off color wise. It's got this smooth, balmy feeling, really nice top coat that's like not a sticky gloss. It's super comfortable. I feel like I have lip balm on. I, I, you couldn't convince me otherwise right now.
As if on cue, Bub shows up, I give him a kiss, there's no color transferring off. See, it's a great product. I don't know how this got past me. I had it on hand, I had it here, but I hadn't used it before, and I've started using it, and I love it. And I love this soft color, too. I mean, doesn't that seem so universally workable? I like how it's playing off of some of the pinky tones in the eye today. But I think I've talked about this before, but a key to some of these long-wearing lip products, choosing some colors that aren't drastic different from your own lip color. If like the all day staying power is a real goal for you, you know, try to hone in on those shades that if they do wear down a little bit, they don't look like really obvious in doing so. But this truly, it lasted me all day. I only touched up the little revitalizing balm one time. Almost forgot we got to talk about the fails. I've got a few fails as well. Okay, we got like four fails this month. Um, this Tarte Found Sealer. I'm late to the game on this. Like I know this was the thing, what, maybe over a year ago people were trying and talking about, but I found it in my collection and I decided, hey, I'm going to give this some shots because I thought maybe it might be a candidate for my foundations that don't look like foundation. Well, it starts out looking gorgeous on me. Um, this is called Multitasking Foundation. It has SPF 20. I've got it in 22N Light Neutral. It really went on the skin, looking like a strong medium coverage. Um, it was easy to blend out. I liked the application and I liked like my initial result, but only halfway into my day, looking up close at myself in the mirror, actually not even getting that close, um, I remember thinking, what is going on on my nose? It looked incredibly patchy and broken down. Also around the eyebrow area, like just various parts of my face I could point to and say, that is the obvious look of makeup on the skin. Because it wasn't looking nice and even in like this flawless veil, it was looking like a patchy kind of broken broken up mess. It might be a skin type thing. I have a pretty easy skin type to work with various foundations, I gotta say. I'm a pretty normal skin type. My skin doesn't create copious amounts of oil to make it a big struggle with me for a lot of foundations. But this, for whatever reason, like it just wasn't really agreeing with me. And it's all from a staying power perspective because it looked great right after I put it on. Here's another foundation I don't love. I tried this Hello Happy Air Stick foundation. Got it in the shade three. It's got the a little smiley face there. I like the packaging, this kind of matte packaging that matches the tone of the foundation. They claim kind of like a weightless feel. I was expecting something like next level light from this, and instead I felt actually quite a bit of drag from the product. It looked okay initially, but not like incredibly radiant or anything, but again with the staying power. That's kind of what tanked this a little bit for me, and with this one, it wasn't really like, oh my gosh, I looked at my skin and I had these areas where it really looked bad. It was more like just a wearing away of the product, like disappearing act of the product. I've got quite a few stick foundations that I do enjoy that I think give like a radiance to the skin that look beautiful. Um, it's odd that this is a product that they would call lightweight or call it an air stick or something like that. A stick foundation just isn't going to play that way. You know, it's a stick. It's a cream in a stick format. You're going to put it on. It's going to have a certain amount of thickness, you know. I just kind of found that claim funny. Um, you know, it got me thinking, having a certain expectation in my mind, and then I'm like, of course it's not going to be like weightless. It's a stick cream foundation. But no, not a fan. Not really on board with that. This CoverGirl Clean Fresh Hydrating Concealer, you know, they put out like kind of the little sheer tinted product product that was just not really that great for me. And now they've got this hydrating concealer. So I thought, let's try. I've got it in fair. And for me, it's just not enough coverage. You know, this can brighten. That tone's going to brighten my skin, but it's not going to be enough to give me like really great coverage. And we see great coverage at an affordable price from e.l.f. with the camo concealer, the hydrating camo concealer. You know, even the Maybelline that I used today did a pretty good job. But for me, this product is lightening and brightening. They call it hydrating. I mean, I wouldn't say it's drying, but I don't find it to be especially hydrating either. I didn't feel like I looked that fresh with wear of this product. So for me, it's kind of going into that average to below average category. Finally, Revlon has put out something called brow lights. Guys, I'm not even going to speak. I'm just going to show. Would you look at that? Look at that. How thick. Part of the stick is brown. Part of it is like a blonde golden highlight, but look how thick this, I mean, is this a candy bar? 
Is this a chocolate bar? Like, it's so big. I actually tried to use this. First off, you completely lose any precision that you get off of that, you know, squared off you know, junk end. You lose that immediately. And then you're just trying to slough this way oversized product through your brows. Who is using this? It is just a thick, chocolate bar block of product that again, you immediately, why do brands give you something that's even so squared off, you have no ability to get any precision back again. And then you got this shimmery side that's like, okay, fine, but it's like those memes where it says no one, dot, 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 and then brands put out a brow product that's half shimmer. I don't get it. It's just way too huge to manage. Then at the other end, this is a growing trend now where brands are putting like actual brushes on the ends here. You saw me use one with a NYX product not that long ago. I've also got one from Hard Candy that has like this little, like teeny tiny artiste style brush. And then you're gonna brush that through. This chunk of a product needs more help than that even. It needs more of the pressure and the separation that a spoolie might provide to actually rake it through. But I thought we might just all have a good laugh over that, I don't know. If it's working for you, tell me how. But thank you guys so, so much for watching. What are the top favorites? Like, I don't even know if I could pick MVPs or something here. Like, this was really exciting and fun for me. The Rimmel was great. Everything was so good here, except the stuff that wasn't good. We made it through the whole video and Rhett stayed sleeping. Woo! Thank you guys. Have a great day and I will see you soon. Bye.